So how often do you do this? This right now, uh, it's probably two, three times a week. I would say one to two times a week, we'll add in actual five on five and playing. Because you said the goal of yours historically has been try to add some new element to your game yeah. every off season. Yeah, and that's, again, that's like, that's getting smarter throughout the game. Even if that's, you saw us breaking down film, I think, you know, numbers don't lie, film don't lie. I think early on in my career, that's something I wish I would have adapted uh, sooner and earlier. But yeah. once we got on the champion, or once I got on a championship level team, we broke down film a lot, and then you fall in love with the process. So your dad, obviously a former NBA player, was also uh, your coach back in the day for yeah. many years. How about the showing me a couple of the drills he used to put you through as a kid? Oh, well, he had sharp elbows, so, I mean, he, uh, I always wanted to play football when I was young. Uh, I was a big fan of the Niners, and in those early 90s, they were incredible. So he told me, you know, you're going to get in here in the paint, and this is going to be your football. We played, uh, always played one-on-one. -on -one. I was a guy that, uh, you know, had the bad attitude, and I, I wouldn't say that. I was very competitive. We kicked the ball over the fence, I'm not playing with you anymore. You know, my dad was 6'9" and played in an era where they were extremely tough. It's tough in the paint because you have a pretty face, you're made for the camera, yeah, so right. what I'm gonna do here is, you know, a lot of stuff, he would just have me play with the ball, move over my head, jab step, and you put it off the glass. Oh. For you, I'd probably start off I played, maybe uh, like 13 to 15 feet, just right in there. I was a C team in sixth grade basketball. That's the extent of my That's okay. playing experience. And what was your sport? Uh, none. None? Yeah, okay. <laughs> At all. <laughs> yeah, so I would try throwing them off there. Okay, you need a little lift there. <laughs> yeah, how's the diet evolved over the years? Uh, I mean, it's, it's crazy. I mean, you guys, I mean, you can, you can fat shame me all you want. I, I was, uh, you know, I had the chin strap beard. That's, it was ugly. It looked like it was painted in, shaved head. But it's funny to look back and see that. And I was probably around 275, 280 pounds now at about 250 and I feel good. No dairy, um, you know, very low gluten, you know, things that your body's gonna absorb fast, break down fast, uh, really, really low ingredient profile, um, a lot of water. So there's some famous uh, old YouTube trick shot videos uh, of <laughs> yours. Uh, the full court, uh, yeah. Uh, you got any? I like to think I can, uh, I can shoot at 94 feet. It's a little bit shorter, but I'm sure I could at least try. Then we get here, we turn the other way. First try. There we go. So I think we can end on that. That was a made-for-TV made moment. Let it go. Yeah. I'll tell you what, that wasn't that bad. Right, give, no, him one, not give him one more. Gotta give him one more. Oh, not even close. I know. That's, come on, that was close. That's what, oh. All right, last one. All right, one, one, one right here, right here. Here we it's go. It's a three-pointer. Yeah, this is it. Oh. I hit the rim. Yeah, that's good. We, we, can, uh, we can cut around there. Yeah. When I first met Kevin, <laughs> he got up off the couch. He goes, ah, nice to meet you, because his back was so shot. So we do tons of stretches before the workout, during the workout, after the workout, to make sure that he's always staying nice and limber and yeah. pliable. And what difference have you noticed this making, Kevin? Oh, it's been huge for me. You know, after even just a few workouts, Mike said, give me three weeks and you'll, you'll really be feeling back to normal. And what was it like before you started doing this? <laughs> what was it like, Mike? <laughs> it was oh, brutal. I could probably get to about here. When we taped Novak Djokovic, uh, he said his single, his single favorite thing to do every day is stretching. Yeah. Well, I used to hate it, but... <laughs> he, he accepted oh, that this God. is his fate. It's what I need. It's my fate, exactly. This is where you find out where some of your deficiencies lay, especially in those legs. Like, my left is my primary jumping leg, and my right is where I do a lot of my jab work as you saw in the basketball workout. So you kind of get to find out where your body or how your body's feeling that day. And then the last one we do is cross over here. When I first started, I could not, as Michael tell you, get my knee to the ground. So this has really opened up for me and helped me. And the more time you spend doing this and the more flexible you are, you found the healthier your body is and the less likely you are to get injuries. Yeah, chase, yeah. chase a game, like I said earlier, and that can mean you know, take on many different meetings. It's not just on the court, it's everything to, to supplement. It can be diet, 
uh, a diet and nutrition. It can be you know anything you're doing away from the court to you know get massage. We do the sauna. We get in the pool. Um, you know, low impact cardio, as I mentioned, just anything lifting as well. Getting with Mike, anything that we can do to to supplement performance. Down six, five, four, three, two, one. Up. So we're doing this to lengthen the tissue, strengthen the tissue. This is kind of like the building blocks of us getting ready to actually get ready for season. Five, <laughs> four, three, <laughs> two, two. I'm, I'm counting for a reason. Okay. Down six, <laughs> five, four, there three, two, well, I five, tear my groin. four, three, two, <laughs> three, up. <laughs> <laughs>